Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to talk about a landmark ruling um, in the Friday the 13th lawsuit case, which has been ongoing since 2016 when original screenwriter Victor Miller uh, filed for the rights to be returned to him from then current rights holder Sean S. Cunningham, who also directed the first film. Um, now, here's here's the thing, and I'm going to give a little bit of background on this, even though I, I, I've done videos about this before, uh, just as a refresher. Um, and that's that uh, Victor Miller uh, used a copyright law that is mostly, uh, before this, had mostly been used for music. Um, it wasn't really used a, a crap ton for uh, film and other works like that. Uh, but now a lot of screenwriters um, have been using that uh, in order to reclaim a lot of the rights to franchises that have since uh, stagnated, I guess, or franchises that have uh, been around for a very long time. We're also seeing this going on with, um, in terms of film anyway, uh, going on with the Terminator franchise, um, and we're also seeing this go on with uh, several other major franchises, and it's currently going on in comic book form um, with a lot of the Marvel franchises. Um, and that, that, that's the other thing, too, is that the lawyer who is representing Victor Miller is Mark Toberoff, who is also representing the estates of the uh, creators uh, for many of those Marvel characters. So the fact that Toberoff was actually able to win this lawsuit is massive when you're looking at a lot of the other lawsuits that are currently going on in film and comic books and other forms of copyright. Um, now... The, this court has ruled that Victor Miller is indeed the person who wrote the, the screenplay, and he indeed has the rights to the original Friday the 13th film. Now, that is the domestic rights. The foreign rights are still held by Sean S. Cunningham um, because Victor Miller would have to file copyright law in the various territories where that exists in order to gain full rights there. But in, in terms of uh, the, the film and its copyright in America, he now owns it. And again, this is a legal battle that went in and out of court a couple of times because originally Victor Miller... Uh, won the case, and then Sean S. Cunningham brought it to the Court of Appeals, and the Court of Appeals put it back into uh, an actual court, and they ruled on it again, and this time, again, Victor Miller has won. Um, so there's there's a lot going on here um, with the Friday franchise, and I'm going to relate this actually a lot back to Toberoff's other lawsuits that are currently going on. Because the reason why this is landmark is because Friday the 13th was the first big one that kind of came out. And the other thing, too, is that, you know, Hellraiser had one of these, and it was re relatively quickly resolved. But the reason why is because Clive Barker wrote the original novella and directed the original movie and wrote the screenplay for the original movie. Uh, so he w it was kind of a one-man show. He wasn't partnered uh, with a lot of other people in terms of the creative process going forward until they actually got to the point where they were filming the movie. Um, and so it, it was not that difficult for him to regain those rights since he was the source of all of it anyway. But Victor Miller was a different case where he did it on, you know, according to Sean S. Cunningham's explanation, on a work-for-hire basis. Again, a lot like um, what we had with Marvel um, and the Marvel lawsuits that are currently going on. Um, the Toberoff is also, again, representing those people uh, or the estates of those people. Um, so... Now that, that the courts have developed a precedent where the writer does have the right, the original screenwriter, does have the rights to reclaim uh, the rights to that film, even though, you know, a lot of studios and the other whoever the rights holders are will claim that it is a work for hire, um, that gives a lot of leg up on some of these other uh, court cases. Because the other thing, too, is, again, there are other film court cases that are going on, like the one for the Terminator franchise that is currently being battled out in court as well. Um, and like I said, Hellraiser, which has already been uh, resolved. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see moving forward what winds up happening, because I, I basically said this when, uh, when I did the video for the Marvel ones, is that even if those estates actually manage to get the rights to those characters back and Disney no longer has them, um, then what's going to probably wind up happening is Disney, uh, again, assuming we go through all the, uh, Disney doesn't want to go through the appeals court, let's put it that way. 
if they rule in favor of the families, Disney will, uh, or the estates uh, rather, uh, Disney will probably wind up writing all of those people a blank check so they can get the rights to those characters back and use them in their films. Um, and I would really expect that to happen. I don't know if, if I would expect that to necessarily happen with Friday the 13th, uh, cause it's not as lucrative a property as Marvel. Um, but I could definitely see a smaller studio offering Victor Miller money for those rights or, you know, paying him for some kind of a limited rights thing. I don't think he's stupid enough to just give it away uh, after all this legal battle and stuff like that. I have a funny feeling he's going to probably try and, and, uh, and milk this for a very long time and he's going to wind up signing off the film rights. Um, to it for a for limited quantities, you know, some of those type of things where it's like, OK, I'm going to sign the rights off of off so you can make one movie. And then we'll talk about the rest, uh, you know, that kind of thing where the rights holder is still somebody who is holds the power in that relationship. A lot of film companies do not like that. Um, but in this scenario, I don't see Miller uh, fighting over this to this extent. Again, the, the lawsuit began in 2016. Um, I don't expect him to have fought over this to this extent and uh, not have a plan for what he's going to do once he has those rights back, if he's going to do anything at all. Now it does leave uh, future installments of the Friday franchise up in the air, but I'm kind of okay with that. Um, I like uh, the Friday the 13th is my favorite slasher fear, uh, series. I think everybody who's watched this channel for long enough knows that. Um, but I also know that at the end, it got pretty shit. You know, J Jason Goes to Hell is not a good movie. It's a terrible fucking movie. It's barely even a Friday the 13th movie. Um, Jason X is stupidly funny. Um, it's not a good movie in any respect of, of the word, but it is entertaining in terms of, you know, the goofiness and the fact that you have Jason in space. And then you have Freddy versus Jason, which doesn't have Kane Hodder, so, you know, they, they can go fuck themselves. Um but, you know, and then there's the 2009 Platinum Dunes one, which can go burn in hell. So the, the Friday franchise has not had a, a lot of really good films basically since the 80s. Uh, so I, I really don't know what they're going to wind up doing with this franchise. Um, but this does set a precedent on a lot of court cases going forward. And since Toberoff is also involved in the Marvel case, I would assume he would take some of the... Uh, things that he's either learned or some of the things that legally have been established in this case and move it over over to there. Now, again, I'm not sure which uh, court is, is is trying this. And uh, they're, they're obviously also Disney has a lot more money than Sean Cunningham, uh, a boatload more money than Sean Cunningham. So uh, it, it really wouldn't surprise me um, if that if that particular court case was drawn out for a very long time. And I don't know if those estates are going to wind up forking the money um, to keep it going that long, uh, assuming that Toberoff is being uh, handsomely compensated, let's put it that way. Um, but th again, this is a major thing for the film industry right now. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more of these court cases popping up as uh, movies hit that magic number, which I believe is 36 years after creation uh, is when they're allowed to uh, try and repurpose those rights or try and regain them. Uh, so like I said, I, I, we, we've seen it with a few franchises already, but I think we're going to see it with a lot more. And I'd be very curious how these things get worked out in court, but that's just kind of my thoughts on this and the announcement that yes, uh, uh, Victor Miller, the original screenwriter of Friday the 13th, is legally the rights owner now. Um, so, you know, put your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, you know, do you think it should have gone to him? Do you think it should have gone to Cunningham? Um, do you think that, what do you think that's going to, Victor Miller is going to do with it now that he has it? Uh, you know, put your thoughts in the comments below. As usual, I like to read them. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button. Subscribe. And remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?